Authorities say the explosion apparently was caused by a gas leak which was ignited when an air conditioner was turned on. Fire marshals and Con Edison are investigating. And there's some question tonight about how safe people who work in high-rise buildings are should a fire break out. Fire officials admitted today that six fire trucks bought for high-rise fires are not equipped with the right hoses. So firefighters can't use the pumps at full pressure. And that may mean in some circumstances that getting water to the top floor of a building would be impossible. Officials stress they can get water to the top floor by using a second pipe. They also said the correct hoses are due to arrive in several months. Well, I don't know if a hot, humid day like we just went through gets you down or not, but I bet you wouldn't feel so bad or complain so much the next time if you keep... Anytime firefighters attack a burning, occupied building, they push their bodies to the maximum. But hot, heavy weather traps heat and noxious fumes. It's like putting a blanket over the fire with the firemen under that blanket. A child playing with matches started this blaze. By the time fire units arrived, the top floor was in flames. Humidity and heat are the two worst enemies beside the actual fire itself. In addition, on the top floor, we have to be concerned with the smoke banking down, tremendous amount of heat. The only way they can fight that fire is on the floor itself. So besides the outside uh, circumstances, the heat of the fire, there's no way for this heat to go off and the, uh, the exhaustion takes off very fast. By the time this fire was brought under control, 16 firemen had to be taken to hospitals because they had eaten too much smoke and suffered too much heat. Captain Robert Wolf also had an eye injury. Well, the weather is debilitating. Sure, the weather has a definite effect on your body to take the start of the fire. This fire could easily have taken the life of Captain Kevin Burns. Burns was searching the top floor, looking through thick black smoke for possible victims when he himself became trapped. As Captain Burns was feeling his way through upstairs rooms, faulty fire hydrants were making it impossible to get water on the blaze. One hydrant blew off one of its two caps, providing kids with an unexpected plaything, but forcing firemen to depend on another hydrant down the street. The only fire hose then in use began coming off this hydrant. The hose had to be switched to the hydrant's other nozzle, causing a tough situation for firefighters on the other end of that hose, inside the burning building. Blew off the hydrant, blew us off the floor. We had to go back down to the landing, got water, we had to come back up again. And that's when he got trapped in a real apartment. Captain Burns had become entangled in a room full of bicycles. He couldn't free himself, so he went to the window and radioed his roof man, Fireman Robert Hannon, to let him know he was trapped. Fireman James Sears was lifted to the roof by aerial ladder, after which Sears executed a textbook roof rope rescue. He came to the spot where Fireman Hannon was, you know, staying with me, and uh, he lowered him. So someone lowered him. Then he picked me up on a window, and we both went down. So, did a nice job. The, the grab of life. Yeah. If Fireman Sears considered himself a hero, he didn't show it. One of the brothers is stuck. You gotta go get him. Heat, humidity, broken fire hydrants, a dramatic life-saving rescue, all part of a day's work. As the driver of Ladder 25 shouted as he pulled away, take it easy, fellas. See you at a big one sometime. Washington wants a dinner there.